Fight fans love the violence of combat sports, and nothing can make a crowd come alive more than seeing a brutal knockout. But there are very few things that can make an audience more upset than seeing a man's health at risk because of a referee who can't recognize when a fighter is helplessly taking a beating. In this video, we'll take a look at some egregious performances by a boxing official where it was blatantly obvious to all those watching that the fight was over, but wasn't clear enough for the referee. Rainy Day Boxing brings you eight of the most ridiculously late stoppages in boxing history. I'm not going to back up. I'm not going to run. You have to kill me right where you got me. But when you talk about fight, Ike Williams, he's to destroy you. He, he will destroy you. Legendary champion Ike Williams was one of the best lightweights in history, and his rough-edged opponent, Bo Jack, was one of the most popular fighters of that era. On a 15-fight win streak, Ike put his title on the line. It was a battle of the relentless brawler, Jack, against the sharp-shooting Williams. There wasn't a moment's rest, with both fighters trading continuous blows until the sixth round, when Ike unloaded a murderous barrage of punches. I thought the referee should have started the fight. And I turned around and I said, I said, Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? You know, like, what do you want me to do to kill the man? One knockout that isn't for the faint of heart. An instance where you could see members of the crowd turn their faces from the brutality in the ring. A frozen Roger Yanez seemed to forget why he was there that night as a senseless Bernard Benton was hit with more than 30 uncontested shots. And there is Garcia, big shot. Benton is wobbling. Benton on his way. Garcia pounding away. A referee letting them go, not even in that corner. Benton, get a better get there. The referee will stop it. Benton sitting on the ropes. Garcia pounding away here on the second round. Sweden's Johansson versus American Mation, two undefeated heavyweight hopefuls fighting for a chance at the title. Mation was a durable fighter, who later in his career would fight the who's who of the 60s, with the likes of Cleveland Williams and Sonny Liston being unable to stop him. But Johansson's vaulted right cross, nicknamed Hammer of Thor, had enough sting to drop anyone it made contact with. And fighting for a Swedish boxing record audience, there was no way Ingmar was going to lose in front of his hometown crowd. Roy Jones Jr. at the peak of his power was near unstoppable and could have his way with any man he faced. 
Richard Hall was a very dangerous puncher who had knocked out all but two of his opponents. Some referees are five to 10 seconds too late to stop in a fight. Referee Wayne Kelly allowed Roy to punish his overmatched foe five rounds too many. Now he puts power behind the right hand and down goes Hall. He He's holding his eye. This may be it. Respectfully, I believe this will be Shane's last fight. I'm really gonna hurt you, you know, and I just appreciate you for allowing me that opportunity. I really do. If there's one man you don't want to upset, it's David Tua. And in the build-up to their fight, Shane Cameron made it his business to rile up the renowned Samoan puncher. With a very poor performance by referee Bruce McTavish, a clear-minded, cold-hearted Tua was allowed the opportunity to do more damage to his opponent than necessary. Pernell Whitaker is considered by many to be the greatest defensive fighter of all time. Right before his multi-million dollar fight with Oscar De La Hoya, he took a big risk taking on the unknown Dyer Bayless Hurtado. Whitaker quickly found out he was in for a difficult night as the well-schooled Cuban floored Pernell twice and frustrated him throughout the fight. Going into the 11th round, it wasn't clear who the judges would award the decision. Whitaker's corner urged him to go for the knockout, and in times where drastic action is needed, like all of the greats do, Sweet P pulled it off. Referee Tony Perez, remembered for the time he let Ray Mercer batter a bewildered Tommy Morrison, was involved in an even more questionable stoppage when the up-and-coming Jerry Cooney took on the aging Ken Norton. Cooney was the hottest prospect at the time and was on his way to a title shot. Although Norton had been easily knocked out by Ernie Schaefer's two years earlier, he still believed he had enough to take on the untested youngster. It would take Jerry Cooney only 54 seconds to send Norton into retirement. Before his refing days, Ruby Goldstein was a top lightweight contender in the 1920s and was a very respected referee in the 50s. One of his most notable nights as a referee was when he allowed Ingemar Johansson to knock down Floyd Patterson seven times before stopping the fight. When welterweight legend Emil Griffith attempted to regain his title from Benny Perrette, Goldstein was given the job to officiate the fight. Perrette was known to play possum when on the ropes and come back firing. In the sixth round, he scored a heavy knockdown, with Griffith appearing to be severely hurt. Taking his reputation into account, Goldstein gave Perrette the benefit of the doubt when he was in trouble, which led to a fatal outcome. Perrette bags to the canvas. 
Perrette has collapsed from that beating on the rope. Perrette was rushed to the hospital, but unfortunately died 10 days later from brain hemorrhaging. It's theorized that his death had a lot to do with his previous fight with Gene Fulmer, where he suffered a terrible beating. Many criticized the New York State Boxing Authorities for allowing Perrette to fight just several months later. Referee Ruby Goldstein was traumatized by the event. Having nightmares and flashbacks to the fight, he would referee only once more. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe.